Hey everybody, welcome back to Anchor Extras, and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of work on the computer today. And uh, what I'm going to be doing here is, uh, now I'm not into like demonstrating different operating systems or anything like that, but I did have to, I felt like I had to do this one in particular, you know, my focus is typically on Linux, but uh, there is an outfit out there that came out with a Linux distribution that... Uh, really mimics windows so we are going to take a look at that and uh so what we've got going on is if i fire up my virtual box to get my virtual machine to come up uh we basically get this and this comes up originally and you can see we've got the uh the fantastic uh microsoft shower poof if i deke over here <laughs> The, uh, we've got the shower poof, basically, essentially, you know, it's the uh, softer, kinder, gentler windows, because it's really nice, okay, but anyways, but there's that, but what, what, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, you know, I'll show you this a little bit, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to change the, uh, the display so that it's bigger, so, you know, it looks like, you know, it fills out the screen a little more and I can get rid of me here so basically if we come into here it just looks very much like it so I'm just gonna cut forward a little bit and uh, if we go to the Windows button or the start button we click on that and look it looks like it's very much like uh, you know like it's Windows so but if I was a punch in display want the configuration so I click on that and of course it comes up it's a virtual one well yeah this is a virtual machine so if I come down to resolution it says it's in 4.3 format well I want to change that to 1440 by 9 which is 1610 and I will apply it and it looks a little more you know typical so uh, so we are going to switch over to that and I'm going to fade that over to that and there's that and I'll shut off my my camera view if I can get this to do this right and well actually we're gonna leave it alone all right so we've got the uh, the setup here and uh, we're going to click OK and I'm gonna put this into uh, scaled mode so that it looks a little better and there it is so that way we don't have the the you know the the, the options bar down at the bottom or anything like that so here is that and I'm actually just gonna shut off the camera so you don't have to see anything moving down below so we'll just cut over to that and uh, you know so we are going to look at you know this looks a lot like Windows doesn't it you know and uh, with Windows 11 in particular one of the things that they did is basically made and this is just me saying it they f they made it a Franken Mac if you <laughs> want to call it that I do but you know it's like they this is done by uh, a company down in Brazil and this this is uh, what they call Windows FX and it's built off of the Linux FX operating system and they went through a lot of effort in order to try to make it uh, as much Windows like as possible and you know when you're first looking at it here yeah you get that you know you've got your <laughs> your your menu listing and stuff like that and a quick launch area down at the bottom in the dead center henceforth franken mac you know you've got your you've got a lot of you know you got your system tray over here and a lot of the graphics are done very much a lot like uh how microsoft did it and such like that and up at the top we've got our trash bin we've got our install we've got microsoft edge we've got linux linux fx 
Android. So what I'm going to show you here is, uh, you know, what do we do if we go to install it? Now this is on my virtual machine. I already have it installed on it, but I'm going to redo it for the sake of this. So I double click on install system and it says, welcome to the Linux FX 11.2 installer. Now this is built off of uh, Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you like to pronounce it. And so this ins installer is going to mimic the uh, the Ubuntu installer. And you can see here it's powered by Linux FX. It's, it's, this is that little sticker that they've got, a little graphic sticker. So if this was actually uh, on a machine, you could actually see a sticker like this on the machine. So we're gonna go through that. So we go to next. You know, we got American English, there we go. And we pick our time zone. And you know, I'm on the East Coast, so I pick New York, that's fine. And then you can pick whatever, you know, style of uh, keyboard that you want. I just leave it at generic 105 key. And uh, on here, it's like, okay, now it needs to ask you, how do you want to install this? So you could inst install alongside it. You could replace a partition altogether. You could erase the disk and just have a complete fresh install. That's what I'm going to be doing. And it actually tells you down here. And you have the option to encrypt the system here and you can have your passphrase right in here. So if we go to that and let's see the bootloader section or location will be uh, you know the boot record of VBox hard disk. This that's on my virtual machine I've got set up for it, so I click next. And then we have to go in and you know, we what's what's the name? So we'll just say win fx, we'll just put it like that. And it automatically populates, you know, what what name do you want to use to log in? WinFX. There you go. Uh, and what is the name of this computer? WinFX VirtualBox. This is on the VirtualBox virtual machine. So it automatically throws in the dash VirtualBox. Choose the password to come in. Now this is just my virtual machine. So I don't have a whole lot of safe, uh, security on it. I mean, because when I'm all done with this, I'm destroying this virtual machine because I don't need it. Log in automatically without asking for the password. Well, I'm gonna kick that off so I don't have to throw it in there. And I only have to throw in the password whenever I, you know, install software or something like that. So I click install and here we go. We're going through the install process. And of course it kicks up, you know, the window goes right off the whole thing. So, and what this is gonna be doing is it, it's at the install phase right here and it's unpacking images and it's going to be installing software and you know this will take a little bit of time so uh, I'm going to stop right here and we will come back when it's all done and it's all done so and as we can see you know it's like it changed the resolution for the sake of the install so that's what why that looks like that so you've got uh, options here of sorts you know, you can, uh, you know, it's been installed on your computer. You can restart into your new system or you can, you can continue using Linux Live thing. And I have it selected for uh, restart now. So I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and restart it and we'll come up to the desktop uh, of a fresh install. So we'll do that in a moment here while I figure that out. Okay, I was able to go ahead and, and get it so that it would give me this notification. Please remove the installation medium and press enter. And as you can see, we've got the uh, blue block Windows logo. And we've got the uh, little spinny thingy that's used in Windows 11. So we are going to uh, go ahead and we are going to hit enter and restart. And we've restarted and we are now coming into the virtual machine with a fully installed, uh, you know, Windows FX. So when it comes up, this is what you are met with essentially. Linux operating, Linux FX operating system. Welcome to Linux FX. So choose a style that looks like you. So it's very much like, uh, you know, how Windows operates, stuff like that. You know, you've got your account, listed up here you've got your options down here and because th this is the settings application so uh, for the sake of demonstration and things of that sort we'll just go ahead and leave it the way 
that Windows comes out by default but uh, you do have the options of everything is bright and uh, powdery you get you can have a dark area with uh, pop-ups that are light and you can have dark on dark so we'll just do light on light because we're going to do it very powdery so we'll do that all right so here's that and of course we get uh, you know the default resolution stuff like that so we want to change the display on here and we can do that by going into our settings so if we go into settings you know you know we hit the start button and you know or the windows key and it looks very windows like so we are going to go into system settings here and uh, then from here go to the system of course we've got all of that we want to go to display so I'm just gonna actually type it if I can find it here oh and you see that I started typing it here and it went pulled up a search box up here so display configuration so I want to pick that and of course being virtual and everything like that and this is a notification so I don't want to see that right now so we'll get rid of that uh, you know, resolution we're going to switch this to uh, 1610 at 1440, 1440 by 900 we're going to do that and we're going to apply it so that it just looks a little better and it's do you want to keep it or revert so we're going to keep it so we'll do that and we'll close out of that and we'll close out of this and there we go and we are on our desktop so and as I said before this is uh, essentially you know and this is a dig on Windows and um, and as a result you know no blame on the company that built this but it's a Franken Mac because of this down here so <coughs> yeah yeah and we've got our options down here you know we've got you've got your start button here I clicked it and I'm waiting for it there it is you know and this is uh, very much the same as you know as if it was Windows and you, we have an all apps list here so these are all of the applications that uh, are in here you know see this we got KDE connect everything like that now the desktop in here is I believe it's built off of uh, what was the term oh I know it I just can't think of it right now sorry but um, plasma that's what it is it's the plasma it's built on the plasma desktop so look at many different things here KDE things of that sort so so that's that button and you know we have a Windows search or a search and then of course you have a virtual desktop you have widgets so that you can control your desktop widgets if you want to add anything you know activity pager you know everything like that you can do all of that it pops up you've got your basically your dolphin file manager so and uh, you know the file manager is the dolphin manager so it looks like this and it looks very similar to other desktop managers in Linux of course this one is of course Franken Mac so uh, you know it looks like Windows uh, to the best that it can be by these folks and uh, you know so it very much operates the same view mode you can do let's see if I maximize this and let's say I go into pictures so here's pictures and of course that's you know it's reflected there you can of course pick your view mode of things in here which would be icons compact or details much like anything else and you can also do this uh, you should be able to change this ah there we go you know you can change your how everything looks let's say if I went there you can see all the icons things of that sort so get any whoop, I don't want to close that and I want to close this so that's the file manager and then of course you know, has uh, Microsoft Edge as your web browser and here's the caveat on that it says of course now we've got a little pop-up saying security updates available so we can view those updates but we'll come back to that later Let's close out of that I was talking about edge so edge which is of course Microsoft's edge and so we have that running as well 
Now it's also what we have on here is if I go into the start menu as I'm waiting for it to catch up with me we have Google Chrome in here as well now why we have Google Chrome in here um, it's pointless to have it in there but it's already in there for folks that want Chrome uh, necessarily but you know we got two we got two caveats to these two web browsers you have Chrome okay so you got Chrome that's inside that you can go and use but the thing is is that you know you know there's data mining uh, you know, tracking things of that sort and since theirs is you know well Microsoft is of course you know big tech much like Google is you know so if uh, you know if you've got all of that uh, telemetry and you know tracking and everything like uh, over on Google on their Chrome then more than likely it would be the same with Edge so just be aware of that now if we were to fire it up your first firing you see the little you see that when you click on it you get a little spinny thingy you know well yeah it's a franken mac so and here it is and of course it being microsoft edge it's going to behave like microsoft edge so do i want to help microsoft improve products no get out of that so of course then of course you get your inspirational informational or focused so i'm just gonna pick focused because i'm boring so of course we're all done with that sign in to sync data no so get out of there and here it is yep and of course everything goes through bing you can change that of course but enough about edge and then of course you have the linux fx store software center now with Windows you have the Microsoft Store well here we have the Linux FX store which is the software center and you know it's it's a pretty intuitive things uh, you know uh, application and you know you can pick accessories you can go developer tools of different types you can pick games you got all different kinds of games and such you know you plasma add-ons you know KDE Plasma Desktop, Fuzzy Clock, woo, Fuzzy, Force Blur, Force Never Blur Fix on user specified windows, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's a it's a nice library of different things. Splash screens, whoa, nice splash screens. Oh, that looks nice. I'm not gonna go playing with that. But you know, it's it's a software center. So there we go. And you know, it's like, alright, um, the uh, what I'm thinking about right now is you know because I'm a Linux user I like picking Linux but uh, I like using the uh, terminal so if we go into here and I go and I want the you know they call it the Microsoft PowerShell well if I click on that here it is you know and it's the PowerShell which is basically a terminal of sorts so and get out of that and so like one of the options you have with Windows 11 is you know this area here of course you know it's Franken Mac but you know some people like to have this particularly this button over here on the left which basically would move this entire thing over to the left and what you would do is you would basically right click on the icon and you can configure it Now, unlike in Windows, you can pick your own icon. You can choose whatever you want to use. Menu position. Now, you got three options in uh, in Windows FX. Center, which is where it's, at, where it's at right now. You can go on edge, which is like, you know, you apply it and it doesn't move. And then, of course, you got auto. And you apply it and it doesn't move. Well, there's no option to put it into to the left through here there is a way to do it so if we come out here and we come this and we actually enter edit mode so basically you right click anywhere in the taskbar area here and you pick edit mode so there it is so you get your edit and everything like that 
So you've got this section here. It's a panel spacer. And then you've got this virtual desktop area. And then you got another margin separator. And then, of course, you've got your system tray. To get this area here back to the left, you would come over here. You would remove the spacer. And there it is. Everything's on the left. And you get, and if you close that uh, edit out, it says widget was mo removed. Boom. You could undo it or you can leave it. So if you undo it, it puts it right back and of course you've got this space here so you know because it, it it leaves this here so that gets disappeared so we'll remove that get that back out there and there it is and it's on the left right back to where you were and of course you've got this panel spacer and we can actually edit that and we can actually remove that and there it is and we've got uh, you know you've got this gap here so that whenever you happen to launch something you'll see an icon for it pop up down here so let's say if I go into here and I go to all apps and let's say ooh, let's say I wanted to pipe up uh, something random that's not already down here let's say HTOP so I fire that up <laughs> Launching failed. Terminal console not found. So we're not going to do HTOP. We are going to pick something else. Let's try. Oh, let's be like this. You see how we got that new icon down here? It's a magnifier. So you can see things a little bit bigger. So isn't that nice? And we'll do one more. Ooh, let's go over to Game Boss 3, whatever that is. We'll fire that up. You see, you got the icon down here. And here we are. Welcome to, to Game Boss, whatever. Graphical development environment based on advanced basic interpreter. Blah, 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 blah. It's a development tool. So, there's that. So, this is uh, it's very much a Franken Mac, that's for sure. And uh, But it's also Linux, so it's very Linux like. So that is going to basically do it for the operating system. My recommendation is to go in here and play with it, see if you like it, and everything else. So we are going to move on for my closing. So there we have that. And, um, you know, it's like, you know, what is Windows FX? It's basically a Windows 11 emulator. That's essentially it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come out and we are actually going to take a look at where you get it from. And you actually get it from here. This is, I don't know if I can move that so I can see it better. It goes to, uh, if you go to windowsfx.org, you're brought to this website. Fast, stable, very safe. You've got the protections that you would normally get with Linux and such like that. Uh, and uh, you know it makes it look like Windows or Franken Mac. <laughs> so friendly interface, Android support, Microsoft applications, you know, uh, Edge browser, Teams, Skype, PowerShell, Office Online, Code, and more, so on and so forth. So it's got different things here. Windows FX 11 Professional. You can actually buy. Uh, essentially you buy a license in order to use the expanded uh, options of uh, Windows FX to make it more like Windows Pro so you have all of that now the difference between the free edition and the professional edition is basically what we've got here all operational features so that is you know what you get for free and you can get use of all of uh, the WX desktop resources limited for 30 days and then you don't get them anymore after that so basically those resources will be gone but it still remains free in the professional edition you get all of these options Android apps desktop system settings Assistant by voice command, Microsoft Active Directory, OneDrive, 
in from the farm manager a wx desktop resources you know unlimited and okay and that is actually a cost of 35 bucks now that is a heck of a lot less than getting a license from microsoft or for windows pro or even you know the the the, the home edition uh which is what like 120 maybe i don't know but um we get all of that so and of course you know you can do it all down here acquire the serial key fast secure and stable yeah yes yeah, linux that's why so verify yourself Ooh, downloads worldwide you know everything like that and you know these these people are actually based out of sao paulo brazil so the portuguese and when they when they speak they speak portuguese but at the same time it's uh you know it's very it's very english -ish. so when you first come to the website it's all in english it's great so there we go and you got releases downloads form support contact like form support and things like that you can get support tickets you can go to the form and you can also contact somebody using telegram which is a messaging service uh similar to let's say discord you know text-based not not so much the voice app but you know it's, it's a text-based uh, uh communication so and then you got the support form which is like a message board system and then you can also put in a support ticket if you so wish so and that's where you get everything in that realm uh, if I can get back over to here and get rid of that and bring it all back to me so we can bring it all back to me and here we are so you know it's like for the the windows hardcore of windows people that use windows and they're like this is my operating system but I don't like whatever you know windows FX may be an option for you it is Linux so uh, it does work very well and it does what it does and it looks really nice it's basically a windows like uh, operating system based out of Linux and it's based on Ubuntu so and it, it will answer those questions about like well can I get my OneDrive can I get into teams you know this is to, to provide a solution to bring you as close to Microsoft as it can um, but give you the uh, the stability and the uh, comfort of Linux uh, you know don't go on my word or anything like that it's everybody has to make their own determination my determination is I'm a Linux mint guy and I'm very happy with that it's very Windows like uh, to me and uh, it was very easy to make the transition over to it uh, in in my particular use case it's different for everybody so there we go um, that's pretty much everything and uh, you know it's we'll move along and um, I actually have another video that I'm going to be doing on uh, some software that is available uh, on Linux but is also available on Windows and Mac and uh, on Android and I, maybe iOS I don't quote me on that but I think it might be but we'll take a look at that that software in uh, the next video so thank you for coming along and uh, you know it's kind of fun playing around with that a little bit now I I have to go blow that uh, that uh, virtual machine out of the water because I, I don't use anything outside of Linux Mint and uh, so we're gonna go do that so we'll talk to you later Skull